Jesus. 13 million people dead. Experts are looking into whether it could make a major event on the San Andreas Fault more likely, according to the LA Times. NASA just released important information regarding the San Andreas Fault, indicating that a large fracture is likely to explode and could cause an unparalleled occurrence. Is the big event really here? We will discuss the most recent research, how California may be affected, and how to get ready. Stretching roughly 800 miles from the Gulf of California in the south to Cape Mendocino in the north, the San Andreas Fault is a significant fault line that passes across California. It delineates the division between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, two tectonic plates that make up Earth. Massive, slowly moving sections of the Earth's crust make up these plates. The San Andreas Fault is important because of its movement. The North American Plate is migrating northwest in relation to the Pacific Plate, which is putting a great deal of pressure and stress on the fault line. This stress accumulates over time and eventually manifests as an earthquake, which is why the San Andreas Fault is among the most seismically active regions in the country. Deep under the Earth's crust, the fault is a complicated network of fractures rather than a single breach. Minor earthquakes are caused by the sluggish movement of certain fault segments that release energy gradually. There are, however, locked parts that have the potential to accumulate a great deal of stress before releasing it all at once during a severe earthquake. There is a lengthy history of large earthquakes occurring on the San Andreas Fault. Among the most well-known is the April 18, 1906, earthquake in San Francisco, which had a magnitude of roughly 7.9. A large portion of the city was burned by fires that started after this earthquake, causing significant devastation. Numerous thousands of individuals lost their lives and countless others were homeless. The possibility of destruction along the San Andreas Fault was brought home sharply by this earthquake. The magnitude 6.9 Loma Prieta earthquake of 1989, which occurred on October 17th in the San Francisco Bay Area and severely damaged Oakland and San Francisco, including the collapse of a portion of the Bay Bridge, was another significant occurrence. The World Series earthquake got its turn because it happened during a baseball World Series game. The Northridge earthquake in 1994 in Southern California served as a more recent reminder of the persistent danger. Even though it didn't happen on the San Andreas Fault directly, this earthquake happened in the same tectonic zone. With a magnitude of 6.7, it devastated the Los Angeles region and claimed many lives. The possibility of more earthquakes along the San Andreas Fault is shown by these historical occurrences. In order to better understand the behavior of the fault and to get ready for future catastrophes, scientists have been researching these historical earthquakes, drilling, satellite measurements, and seismographs, which record Earth's vibrations, have all been used in the long-running research on the San Andreas Fault. The investigation of fault movement has been one significant field of study. Researchers have shown that the movement of the San Andreas Fault varies depending on location. Certain places experience smooth plate tectonics, which frequently results in little earthquakes. We refer to this kind of motion as creep. In some places, the fault is locked, and tension accumulates there until a bigger earthquake releases it. Because of their potential to trigger strong, catastrophic earthquakes, these closed parts are very dangerous. By looking at the rock and sediment layers, Scientists have also been able to learn more about the history of earthquakes along the fault. Large-scale earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault happen on a regular basis, sometimes hundreds of years apart, according to a study of this kind known as paleoseismology. Researchers have examined the fault itself as well as the possible effects of earthquakes, such as the reactions of infrastructure and buildings to seismic waves. With the use of this knowledge, engineers can create earthquake-resistant structures that lessen damage and save lives. The San Andreas Fault Observatory at depth, SAFED, is one noteworthy scientific endeavor. For this experiment, a deep borehole was drilled into the fracture to monitor its behavior up close. By providing useful information on the temperature, pressure, and movement of the fault, instruments inserted into the borehole have helped scientists better understand the circumstances that precede earthquakes and enhance their models for forecasting future occurrences. Recent technological developments have also been very important for earthquake study. Radar-equipped satellites can measure the movements of the Earth's surface with astonishing accuracy. 
Scientists can pinpoint locations where stress is building up and detect even minute changes along the fault thanks to a device called INSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar. Recently, NASA released an important announcement that has drawn interest from both the public and experts. They presented fresh research on the San Andreas Fault, concentrating in particular on a fracture that is about to have a significant eruption. Given the recognized potential for large-scale earthquakes caused by the San Andreas Fault, this declaration has sparked concerns. According to NASA's findings, this fault line crack may have reached a dangerous condition. This indicates that a large earthquake could result from the pressure and tension that have built up along this section of the fault. NASA's research endeavors to furnish more accurate data and enhance our comprehension of the fault's behavior, so aiding in the anticipation and readiness for forthcoming seismic occurrences. NASA uses satellites with specialized instruments to look at the surface of the planet. These satellites can pick up even the smallest ground changes thanks to radar and other sensing technologies. One such technology is INSAR, which enables highly precise measurements of the Earth's surface movement by scientists. They can determine how the ground has changed over time by comparing radar photos obtained at various dates. Another essential component are GPS stations situated on the ground. These stations are positioned along the fault line and measure their exact locations on a regular basis. Movement along the fault might be indicated by even minute changes in their positions. Scientists can monitor the fault's activities in real time with the use of this data. Numerous seismographs are located around the area to record Earth's vibrations and are capable of detecting seismic waves produced by even the tiniest earthquakes. Earth scientists can ascertain the location, depth, and magnitude of earthquakes by the analysis of data obtained from this equipment. Understanding the fault's behavior and seeing patterns that could point to a greater earthquake that is about to happen require this information. NASA carries out aerial and ground surveys in addition to using instruments on satellites and the ground. Precise measurements and photographs of the fault line can be obtained by drones and aircraft fitted with cameras and sensors. LIDAR, or laser scanning technology, can be used by ground teams to produce precise maps of the landscape. These surveys offer a more detailed view of the fault and may highlight changes that are hidden from view from space. Numerous significant findings regarding the San Andreas Fault and the particular fracture that is causing worry have come from NASA's recent study. The San Andreas Fault has a particularly delicate spot where the crack that NASA has been examining is situated. Significant earthquakes have been known to occur in the past along this portion of the fault. The crack itself has gotten bigger with time, which suggests that pressure and stress are rising. The fracture stretches deep into the Earth's crust according to NASA data, which is indicative of a possibly strong seismic event. Knowing the state of the fracture is essential to assessing the possible risk. NASA's measurements show that in addition to spreading, the crack is moving more quickly. This indicates a greater frequency of slippage between the two sides of the fault. Such activity indicates that the fault is getting closer to the point at which it could explode with a tremendous amount of energy, perhaps as an earthquake. The amount of stress building along this section of the fault is among the most alarming findings. NASA's instruments have been gathering data, which suggests that the stress has been increasing more quickly than previously noted. This quick buildup of tension is a red flag that suggests the fault may be ready to rupture during a big earthquake. The patterns of the region's lesser earthquakes represent another important finding. According to NASA's data, there has been a rise in the fault's minor earthquake frequency and intensity. These minor earthquakes can occasionally serve as precursors to more powerful ones. NASA's pattern indicates that the fault is getting increasingly unstable, raising the possibility of a significant earthquake happening soon. The possible effects on neighboring areas are also highlighted by NASA's research. Because of the position and state of the crack, a significant earthquake might have an impact on a large area, including crowded cities. According to the data, areas that are within a sizable radius of the fault may feel intense shaking, which could cause harm and perhaps fatalities. When scientists talk about the San Andreas Fault being close to an earthquake of great magnitude, they are talking about an imminent eruption of the fault. An eruption is the abrupt release of built-up tension along a fault line in geology. The Earth trembles as a result of this energy release, which we experience as an earthquake, a transformed fault, the San Andreas Fault, 
allows two tectonic plates to move past one another horizontally. Stress builds up along the fault as a result of these plates moving over time. The rocks eventually break because the strain is too great for them to withstand, releasing the energy that has been stored. An earthquake is the result of this unexpected release. Recent data from NASA indicates that a certain San Andreas fault fissure may have reached a critical stress level. This suggests that the fault may soon give way, possibly resulting in a powerful and catastrophic earthquake. The phrase on the brink of eruption describes a severely stressed fault where a large-scale seismic event could happen at any time. To prepare for and lessen the effects of an earthquake, one must be aware of its likelihood and probable magnitude. According to NASA's research, the San Andreas Fault's risk rating is influenced by a number of factors. The amount of tension that is built up along the fault and the fault's past activity both affect the chance of an earthquake. Major earthquakes have frequently been caused by the San Andreas Fault, and the current stress level indicates that more major events are likely. Although it is difficult to forecast when an earthquake will occur exactly, NASA's observations of rising activity and stress suggest that the fault is more likely to break soon. The quantity of energy released during an earthquake is referred to as its magnitude. Greater magnitude earthquakes release more energy and inflict more harm. The length and depth of the fault section that may rupture can be used to determine the possible magnitude of an earthquake along the San Andreas Fault. The particular fracture that NASA has been examining is a section of a fault segment that is actively active. An earthquake with a magnitude of 7.0 or greater could result from the total rupture of this portion. This magnitude of earthquake is regarded as large and has the potential to seriously harm infrastructure, buildings, and the environment. Understanding the risk requires looking at the San Andreas Fault's historical earthquake records. There has previously been a great deal of damage caused by large, Earthquakes, such as the Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989 and the San Francisco earthquake in 1906, these incidents offer important new information about the behavior and possible consequences of the fault. By integrating past data with present-day observations, scientists can approximate the significant earthquake recurrence period along the fault. The mean duration between noteworthy earthquake occurrences is denoted by this interval. Based on the available data, it appears that one of these intervals may be coming to an end, which would raise the possibility of a significant earthquake. The southern part of the San Andreas Fault is close to cities like Los Angeles and San Diego. Strong shaking could occur in these crowded locations, seriously damaging roads, buildings, and infrastructure. Due to its dense population and sophisticated infrastructure, the Los Angeles metropolitan area is especially vulnerable. Transportation, utilities, and emergency services might all be affected by an earthquake, making it difficult for locals to access vital resources. Although the fault's center length passes through less populous areas, smaller towns and villages are also at risk from it. Areas like the Coachella Valley and the Inland Empire may encounter mild to strong seismic activity. In Central California, agriculture is a key business. Farming operations, irrigation systems, and food production might all be negatively impacted by a significant earthquake. The wider food supply chain may be impacted by the economic effects, which can go beyond the immediate area. The San Francisco Bay Area is in close proximity to the northern part of the San Andreas Fault. There have been large earthquakes in this area in the past, and another one could have disastrous consequences. San Francisco, Oakland, and San Jose are significant urban centers that could suffer from strong shaking and probable liquefaction where the ground behaves like a liquid owing to violent shaking. Residents may be seriously at risk of buildings collapsing and roadways cracking as a result of this. Coastal locations near the fault line, including towns and cities along California's coastline, might be damaged by both the shaking and probable secondary impacts like tsunamis. While tsunamis are less prevalent along the San Andreas Fault compared to subduction zones, the potential cannot be fully ruled out. Transportation and trade may be hampered by damage to coastal infrastructure, such as ports, bridges, and coastal roadways. The whole nation would be affected economically by this, not just California. A large earthquake's effects would extend beyond the area directly surrounding the fault line. A large radius was affected by the shaking, including areas distant from the core, 
An earthquake that occurred in Southern California, for instance, had an impact on portions of Nevada, Arizona, and even Northern Mexico. Highways, trains, and pipelines are just a few examples of the state's infrastructure that may be impacted. This would hinder the flow of goods and services, cause financial losses, and make emergency response more difficult. Prominent seismologists and geologists have responded to recent discoveries regarding the San Andreas Fault. These specialists offer insightful explanations of the relevance of NASA's findings and their implications for future study and readiness. Reputable seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones highlighted the significance of the results by saying, NASA's new data confirms what many of us have been concerned about. The San Andreas Fault is under significant stress. This implies that in the event of a major earthquake, we must increase our vigilance and preparation. NASA's technology gives us more accurate data, which is essential for enhancing our forecasting models. Remarking, we can monitor the fault with unprecedented accuracy thanks to the use of INSAR and other remote sensing technologies. Eminent geologist Dr. Thomas Jordan emphasized the importance of NASA's cutting-edge technologies. This aids in our comprehension of the minute movements and accumulation of stress along the fault line, both of which are essential for determining the danger of earthquakes. The results emphasize how important it is to keep funding these kinds of technologies. The consequences for public safety were highlighted by Dr. Kate Hutton, who stated, it is evident that we need to give earthquake preparedness top priority given the increased activity and stress along the fault. Ensuring preparedness and resilience in communities is more important than focusing only on the scientific community. The cooperation between NASA and other research centers is a positive development. NASA works closely with the USGS, which has spent decades researching the San Andreas Fault. The USGS offers important historical records, ground-based data, and seismology expertise. In order to have a more comprehensive understanding of the behavior of the fault, NASA and the USGS collaborated to integrate satellite data with ground-based measurements. Another important collaborator in the research of the San Andreas Fault is the Southern California Earthquake Center, SCEC. This multidisciplinary research group, including more than 60 universities, studies the dynamics behind earthquakes, creating computer models to simulate earthquake. Events and evaluate possible effects is part of their work. These models benefit from real-time updates and increased accuracy thanks to NASA data. Caltech is working on a number of San Andreas fault-related research projects. Their scientists investigate the physical characteristics of the fault and the mechanisms underlying the creation of earthquakes using data from NASA. The Earthquake Research Laboratory at Caltech serves as a central location for experimentation and seismic data analysis related to fault dynamics, International cooperation is also included in NASA's work on the San Andreas Fault. Researchers benefit from the collaboration of scientists worldwide who share data, techniques, and conclusions from comparable fault systems worldwide. These partnerships support the comparison of various fault behaviors and the development of global earthquake prediction models. California's municipal and state governments have increased seismic preparedness and safety significantly in reaction to NASA's latest findings regarding the San Andreas Fault. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more just like it.